All right, guys, in this video, we'll see how we can upload files using uh, Node.js and Angular. So let's proceed to the code. Uh, so first, uh, we create one uh, server.js file where it will be served from our uh, Node.js application. And uh, here, what we can see that first, we are setting up our disk storage and uh, we're setting up where the files will be stored with the destination parameter and we have one constant there which is uh, pointing to directory uploads and if we go to our project we have such directory uploads where our uploaded photos will be uh, stored then we have a file name so the moment the file is received and saved uh, we would like uh, to have a special uh, unique name. So we grab the original name, then uh, when it's created and the extension, then we set up motor with the configuration of this uh, storage. The next thing uh, we'll see is uh, how we can have an API that will handle uploads. So first we have a check whether the upload from motor is successfully performed. This cover photo is actually the field that we are reading from the form or is being sent to our API by post request. And if it's successfully uploaded using the single function, we'll have something inside of the request.file. So this callback here will run. If it's not, we just return a status of 400 with the following JSON uh, success uh, message. If there are no problems, we are just returning the image file name. So the resulting file name inside of our system, again, as a JSON format to the user. Any other errors are also considered as a failure and we return a message to the users. So this is our API upload part. And then we have a second part of our server JSON related to the JSON server that we're using. So we're using a JSON server external package uh, that will serve items.json file for us. And we are configuring here um, this JSON server. And uh, what we also want is to circumvent the restrictions when making cross-origin requests. So for this, uh, we set up special uh, headers for allowing uh, those requests to pass correctly. And uh, what's here uh, different is that uh, we're listening both to port 3000 for normal JSON requests and 3500 for the upload. Now on the Angular uh, site, we have one files items JSON that uh, is read by our server and served. And let's see how we can consume this file. So we have one service item service that actually goes and does an attempt to fetch data from our node.js backend so if i load up this resource here in the browser i see the following format it has been served uh, to us that's how we use the http client to make a get request and we are setting up uh, some uh, cache control headers uh, to not cache our request and after we have a result, uh, we would like to return an object containing both uh, value and error. It will be of this type, uh, basically interface result where we have value and error. And in case of a result, we'll make an object with value returning the result from um, the get operation. And of error, we'll just return an error message inside of the error key. So that's the functionality of uh, this observable here, get our items. And we're consuming this inside of our uh, list items component where we are loading up our item service and then we're using the get all items observable, but we are managing to subscribe uh, with the RxGS interop uh, to signal to this uh, service. So it's uh, the unsubscription is handled automatically for us. So we are subscribing to the observable and we have the data inside of service items signal. Out of this, we create one computed signal and we're monitoring what's happening when we are reading the service items signal dot value. Uh, so now when we are inside of the HTML, we can check this data uh, computed property here from the signal. And if there is something inside, we would like to 
to list the items in a for loop. So this is the for loop here. And we're showing the title and the uh, photo of the items. And uh, let's see this in action now. Uh, first, as we saw, we have tomato. And this is how it is displayed uh, to the users. Uh, so we have a mechanism now for listing our uploads. And uh, let's see how our upload form functions. At the end, we see app product form and we can go to it. And uh, we are in the product form component. So in this um, form component, we have one function that reads the past URL. And this function read URL, it's used inside of our form uh, where never we place something inside of our image input. So here we have one a template reference variable and we are passing it to our read URL function. We're setting up file reader and we read the file and we add one event listener that updates the photo, which is our placeholder with the current uploaded image. Then what we see in the form is that the new item title and description are being mapped to the ng model. And uh, actually we have the information about our item in this uh, new item member variable. And the moment we press on the add item uh, button, we enter inside of this method where uh, we use signals inside of our service to set up the uploaded item details as well as the selected file and when they are set we again subscribe to one uh, function that's called add item so the add item as we can see it's a little bit more complex it's a method returning observable and when we prepare our uh, form data we send it first to the api result inside of our server and if the upload is successful uh, we get the image url from the server and we send all the information to our items uh, json server uh, where we upload all the information about the selected item and we add to this information the newly uploaded url of the image when everything is ready we form again this uh, a value and error result. Here, if it's successful, we just fill the value part. If we have error, we just fill the error part. Later, we would like uh, from uh, the information from this add item to uh, get some values and to display them in the template. So for this, we have created one additional signal with a tap operator. We create a side effect. So the moment the asynchronous operation uh, completes, uh, we would like to set a signal with uh, again value and error. And this signal is add data signal. And uh, here again, we have two computed values. One is data and one is error message. They're based on the add data signal. So if I go to the template of the product form, at the bottom, we see that we are checking for the existence of data and error message. And if they exist, we are showing them to the user. Now let's see how this functions. So if I type here potato and I choose a file and I click on add item and everything is all right. Here in the debug uh, message, we see the title, the description, the newly created um, photo uh, name, as well as the ID that has been auto-generated for us. The interesting part is now, if I go to the uploads, we see our tomato and this is uh, the potato. And we also have them inside of our items.json. So as you can see, this is our first integrated record. And then the JSON server has created uh, the new record for us for the potato. As an overall, you see that when we are making HTTP request, we don't directly return the error by catching it and redrawing it, but just uh, we have one object with an error and value property. And that's because the signal always want to have some value inside. And when we are using, for example, the add item here inside of our uh, component, uh, we don't know exactly when and the uh, HTTP operation, since it's uh, asynchronous, will complete and fill the value of the signal. And that's why uh, we use another signal to catch all those uh, values, the value and the error. And this is done inside of a side effect.
All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the information and you can practically apply it in your projects. If you find it useful, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.